my wife and I were newlyweds that first year, and we went to a country furniture store called Mabel's, and they had a little quaint little rack of dog and other animal puppets that had super realistic heads, mm -hmm. incredibly realistic, and it cracked me up. They were so, I'd never seen a puppet with that much detail that you could just slip on your hand. So I picked up a dog and immediately started sniffing Michelle's ass with it. And she thought it was really funny. Then on my birthday in February, she surprised me with like seven of these puppets. It was like a lamb and like three dogs and a cat and an owl. And, and I was just <laughs> so excited. And coincidentally, the Westminster Dog Show was coming to town like a week later. I would be watching Letterman on Channel 2 on CBS to see what he was doing to make sure we don't do what he does. And, or, to, or to almost do the opposite on purpose sometimes. So he would have Westminster dogs, like just, ladies and gentlemen, the Westminster dogs are here. And all they would do is just run down the aisles um, like real dogs and just up and down and do nothing but that. And it was charming and funny. So I thought, oh, so we'll be the show that makes things up and we'll have the dogs be puppets and let's have the puppets have various talents. And Conan will say, every year these dogs are getting more and more talented. Let's see some of the, some of the winners in, here's the winner in the herding category. And it would, a dog would come out, a little dog puppet. Um, we had a puppet stage. And the dog would come out and sing the theme from the bodyguard. And then another dog would saw another dog in half, like a magician dog. Right. And there'd be dueling banjo dogs. And we started doing this every year. We had one dog that lit its own farts. This is 1997, and I've left the show except to do clutch cargos. And I just, I'm in the shower and have the idea of um, the, we never did insult comic. So I called John Groff and said, if he, would you want to do uh, Westminster again? Because, uh, I'd love to do a dog who's an insult comic, and, um, and the whole joke will be that he just says something nice and then says for me to poop on, and that's it. He's got no talent at all, and he's like, that's great. And I picked the Rottweiler, and Deb Shaw, the costume, uh, the wardrobe person, has already designed a gold bow tie, which I was not expecting, and I loved it. And you had the cigars. Had the cigars, absolutely, yes. And the kid, you got it made. <laughs> and let me tell you something else, and the cigar would fall out, he'd grab another one. <laughs> you know, and then it just worked perfectly to do that with Triumph. He just, uh, and, and I really did funny long takes with Triumph, like he'd go for me to poop on, and then I would just stare at the camera. Like Myron Cohen, remember that of deadpan? Course deadpan comic. That was a big part of the humor to me back then, was just that he would say a line and just this dead-eyed puppet would just stare at the camera like exactly like a, a deadpan comedian would. Um, and we would get big laughs from just the stares back then. So the bit went great. And then we realized we should do it again. And as we did it, more and more I started to realize, oh, this is... Um, this can provide catharsis for the audience because Conan is super polite to his guests. Mm. He's really funny, but he's not the kind of guy, he's not, he, he never would give a guest a hard time like Letterman would or Howard Stern or anybody like that. And, and yet he still gets a lot of cheesy guests for his first act because we're on at 12.30. So Hasselhoff comes on. William Shatner, John Tesh, the audience is kind of dying for Conan to make fun of them on some level, but he won't. He's a gracious host. He's very funny anyway and finds funny stuff to pull out of them, but he will not go there. So then Triumph goes there and the audience is finally like, you know, it's like a grenade 